All right, folks, um, a few notes from me. President Biden is, of course, going to Israel tonight, presumably to show support for Israel and their war effort against Hamas. Not that anyone needs reminding, but documents recovered from the bodies of dead Hamas terrorists show orders to kill as many Israelis as possible. All right, don't want to forget that. One document from Hamas terrorists sent to attack Sa'ad, which is a 670-person collective farming community, that document instructed the terrorists to, quote, take control of the kibbutz, kill as many individuals as possible, and capture hostages until receiving further instructions, uh, period, end quote. So, so, it's not surprising that former U.S. Ambassador to Israel David Friedman told us this last night. Because Israel will annihilate Hamas given the opportunity. They have... All right. Or in military terms, General Jack Keane told us this last week. I don't want to forget it. And Larry, I mean, we got to be upfront about what needs to be done here. We need to kill them. That's the only thing that stops these guys. They are absolutely committed to this barbarism. And we got to go in and kill them, just like we did with ISIS, just like we did with the Al Qaeda. All right. I sincerely hope President Joe Biden understands this. Now, I give Biden credit so far for standing behind and supporting Israel. Yes, I give Biden credit. But the diplomatic talk is now that Mr. Biden is going to Israel because his Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, got assurances from Prime Minister Netanyahu of a substantial humanitarian aid package for Palestine. Well... What does that mean? Hundreds of trucks, hundreds of trucks are lined up on the border in Egypt to enter the Gaza Strip for, quote, humanitarian aid. But there's no inspection of this aid. Could be baby formula or could be war materials. Who's going to run this aid? Hamas. As Caroline Glick writes, all in the so-called ministries in Gaza are Hamas. All the hospitals are Hamas. All the distribution will be done by Hamas. Caroline Glick will be joining us in just a minute to talk about this. And Senator Marsha Blackburn, who will be on later in the show, is also opposed to this so-called Palestinian aid because it's Hamas aid. Meanwhile, U.S. taxpayers have basically given Hamas about a billion dollars in the last couple years. Donald Trump cut that off. Joe Biden reinstated it. Who's helping whom here? Also, a letter to Mr. Biden. Get this. 63 House Democrats and 50 Republicans. Therefore, a bipartisan letter, 113 people, petitioning Mr. Biden to cut off all Iran funding sources, maximum enforcement of economic sanctions, end the Iran oil trade to China, worth, by the way, $153 million per day. And the letter says, be sure that the U.N. ballistic missile sanctions on Iran that expire tomorrow, October 18th, cannot be allowed to expire. This is 117 bipartisan House members. By the way, their letter asked Mr. Biden to put pressure on Qatar and Turkey to cease their support of Hamas. Little known factoid, most of the Hamas leaders are in Qatar. The Biden administration hasn't said a word about all this. They're still in denial about Iran and presumably Qatar and Turkey. Now, a bunch of GOP senators led by Tom Cotton want to block former Obama Treasury Secretary Jack Lew from the Israeli ambassadorship because Lew has a pro-Iran track record. And when he was at Treasury, Lew unfroze billions of dollars of Iranian assets. Now, let me give a quick diversion here. I got to add this. Apparently, the Biden administration is about to ease energy sanctions on Venezuela. Really? Venezuela is run by communist dictator Nicolas Maduro. That government is backed by thousands of Cuban military and Secret Service people. Are we begging for oil from a socialist dictator again? And finally, a very big hat tip to historian Walter Russell Mead and his Wall Street Journal column called Appeasing Iran Has Failed. I want to note this. Professor Mead writes, Iran is unappeasable, but this truth is too inconvenient for the Biden administration to admit. Instead, 
Administration spokesmen continue to minimize Tehran's involvement with and responsibility for the murders. He goes on to say, it is the mullahs and the agents of the Islamic Republic of Iran who provided the resources, training, and encouragement without which the Hamas leadership would neither have dared nor been able to unleash this evil on the world. The truth is simple. Iran is at war with Israel and with the U.S. It does not seek compromise or accommodation. It wants what it says it wants, a holocaust in Israel and the destruction of the United States. Walter Russell Mead. My question, is anybody in the Biden administration listening? That's my riff tonight.